Today I fucked up by forgetting about the thermos with hot chocolate. My daughter took a thermos with hot chocolate to go to friends, but didn't drink any of it, and left it on the kitchen counter when she came home. I did see it, but decided she should clean it herself, instead of leaving everything for me, so left it where it was, and told her she should clean it. FFWD two days, and I mysteriously find the thermos cap halfway through to the living room. You'll be able to guess the sight that welcomed me when I walked into the kitchen. Thermos blew its top off, creating a puddle of pieces of fermented hot chocolate, and a nice Rorschach kink blot test type brown stain on the ceiling. What did daughter say when I showed her the scene, damn, why didn't we install a camera in the kitchen? Ooh. Can we do it again so I can film this? Too long didn't read, I left a thermos with chocolate on the counter. It exploded. Well, are you gonna do it again? I'm all for experiments, but think I'm gonna pass on this one. Plus the thermos was foobar. Would have made her clean every inch. Oh, she is. If the lid slash top smells bad try baking soda and lemon, leave it for half an hour, if it still smells wash it out with vinegar. You may need to repeat this a few times. No rescuing the lid, it was completely bust, so had to throw the whole thing out. But this is a good tip for future use. I sometimes take soup in a thermos, and it is sometimes hard to get rid of the smell after. This happened in my office once. Everyone except me and one other co-worker were in a meeting and all of a sudden a thermos on someone's desk exploded. Terrifying, gross and cool all at the same time. So lucky you were there to witness that. I just found one of the two missing pieces of the lid. One to go. Suddenly want some chocolate wine. I always want chocolate wine. Today I fucked up by sending inappropriate messages to another woman. This didn't happen today, but back in February. My wife came up to me at work with a worried look on her face, we work at the same place. She held out her phone and showed me this message. It got sent to her in December, but since she wasn't friends with this woman on Facebook she never saw it until she went clearing out her message requests. What is this? My wife asked me, calmly but sternly, and with a slight tremble in her voice that let me know she was one wrong answer away from crumbling. Instantly my stomach sank. Even though I knew I didn't do anything wrong, it just felt off. I tried to brush it off as some sort of spam. We've both gotten emails from scammers in the past with messages that say things along the lines of I am hacker. I have seen your dark desires. My my, you are so naughty. If you not sent me $5,000 in 48 hour I will mail your histories to your closest families and colleague. You have been worn. Then I thought about it for a moment and realized that she would have messaged me first if it was some sort of blackmail scam. So we clicked on this woman's profile picture and see that she lives in the same state as us, fuck, and even works as a bartender at a bar we used to frequent, F-U-C-K. My brain started shitting itself at this point. It looked bad, but I knew I didn't do anything wrong. I know this sounds unbelievable, but I have no idea who this is, or why she would say that. I'm not cheating on you, I swear. My wife trusts me, but I could tell she was still really uncomfortable. I didn't blame her though, because I sounded full of shit even to me. I started second guessing myself. What if I blacked out and did something awful? I don't really drink a lot but maybe I did around the holidays. As far as I could tell, it was over but it still didn't sit right with me and I didn't want my wife to feel uncomfortable or to lay awake at night and wonder what the hell really happened. So I asked her to send the woman a message clarifying what she meant. She never responded. So I started scrolling through my messages when all of a sudden I saw her name pop up. Clicked on the message and, ooh, it was her. I rushed over to my wife and showed her the message. Both of us were instantly relieved. My wife rolled her eyes in a way that let me know she was disappointed in my being a man-child, but relieved that I wasn't a cheater. Too long didn't read, I acted like a shithead online and my wife thought I was trying to clap some local cheeks. That is absolutely hilarious. Holy shit. I don't think I have ever related to a today I fucked up as much as I do this post. I talk mad shit online. Like my go-to is calling people sister fuckers. People hate being called that when talking about Star Trek. A plus ending line on the text to the woman. Truly words to live by. 
That's hilarious, but also so mind-blowing that woman would send that to your wife. She knew what that message would be read as. Willingly fucking with your marriage over something that simple. People are awful. LOL almost ended your relationship because of poop pee 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 fart shit cock balls fuck. Holy shit I laughed so hard at this whole post mainly that last text. Today I fucked up by making my GF jealous of my insect colony. Yes, you read the title right. I'll preface that by saying most of it was said under a joking tone, but the sting was there nonetheless. See, I love me some reptiles. As long as I can remember, I had a vivid passion for scaly critters, especially snakes, to the horror of pretty much everyone I knew. 25 years later I now proudly own a boat a day I fucked up a milk snake and recently acquired a no less boat a day I fucked up a leopard gecko. My girlfriend however hates anything that isn't a cat or a dog, especially insects and snakes, to the point of having vivid nightmares just by scrolling a pic of one on Instagram. I acquired the snake before we moved together and she grew surprisingly accustomed to him, to the point of actively loving and petting him, even when I feed him frozen rodents. Here's the issue though, the recently acquired gecko, on the other hand, eats live insects only. I thus started my own colonies of darkling beetles and dubia cockroaches. Now see, these roaches are objectively pretty cute, but for GF they have the like ability of a sun-dried face hugger. Now, here's where the F you started. You are what you eat is my motto for the gecko, and I give extra care to the dubia colony so that they are well fed and provide all the good stuff when eaten. Varied diet of fruits, vegetables and protein, daily care for temperature and humidity, you name it. As you can expect, my girlfriend is less than thrilled with the whole ordeal and pretty much looks at me playing with my roaches like a hopeless mom cheering on her toddler for sticking a slug in his nostril. And sadly no amount of passionate talking about why and how I do stuff will make her more interested. Today that culminated when she jokingly implied that I probably cared more for my settlement of thumb-sized hell spawns than I did for her. Which I obviously answered in the most logical way a man could in this situation, by explaining to her that, contrary to the gecko, she wouldn't die if I stopped caring for her. I am not a smart man indeed. What should have been a simple tease spiraled into a full-blown shit talk contest, and she took it upon herself to really get under my skin. When she suggested roaches survive on shit and moldy cardboard in the nature, my stubbornness to keep to facts ended up being my downfall, as I replied that it was not for the roaches sake but for the gecko. I explicitly shouted that I was dedicating them all this time because at the end all they need is to be eaten well. And there, when I was so dedicated to defend my little critters from this grave injustice, I was welcomed with the coldest, most savage. And so do I that I ever heard. I stood there speechless while she laughed on her way out of the living room. To my horror another laughing track quickly joined hers and I realized that the neighbors had witnessed the whole spectacle through the open window, and were now cheering me for my apparent lack of oral performance. We're meeting on daily basis in the courtyard of our building, and I am now terrified of crossing them on my way out. My girlfriend on the other finds it extremely funny and I've already heard her giggle a few times with the neighbor wife. To add insult to injury, my colony is now malfunctioning and I am having problems breeding them. Pretty sure I'm under no circumstances going to tell her that my roaches are having a dry spell. Too long didn't read, got into a tease contest with my GF over the time I spent taking care of my roaches, ended up with her implying she's sexually frustrated in front of our neighbors. It cracks me up so badly that the colony is collapsing after that argument Lamar like holy shit. They don't like it when mommy and daddy fight. I'm a woman, I raised bearded dragons to sell and so obviously I also had to have two beer roaches. I have moved on from dragons but still have my roach colony as well as Madagascar hisses, multiple isopod species, and millipedes. They do require attentive care to keep them happy and healthy and just about everyone I know is horrified by my obsession. But I do recommend getting dry roach food, as it is a good nutrition balance and it's much easier to keep humidity down as you can wet it only enough to make color dough texture. Also, maybe spend a little more time on her. I know how easy it is to get distracted in caring for hordes. Haha <laughs> thanks for showing the world normal functioning women can also appreciate this stuff. 
I started feeling like a weirdo. Actually the conditions I have so far are really good and if anything my issue is more to keep humidity high enough than down. And don't worry about my GF, we like to poke at each other and this was definitely more on the banter side of things. Unfortunately the neighbors weren't part of the equation. I don't think Op knows what objectively means. Don't you dare imply that my very objective assessment of roach cuteness is wrong. Joke aside though, I agree they are pretty gross. But compared to house cockroaches, the dubias are surprisingly clean, social and docile. You should probably take care of that. I like to believe this was all given as a joke, as my performances have never been contested so far. But extra care will be put in that area for sure now.